In this update, we're going to go over my winter snowfall analysis for this upcoming winter. So let's really dive into the details and break it down for you and take a look at the setup going forward. This is the period after Thanksgiving, during that time frame, through the first couple of days of December. What we're noticing here is two dominant features. One is up here towards Alaska. That is a huge ridge of high pressure. And then another one that's going to be building across Greenland. What that's going to do is going to be able to allow this colder air, the funnel, into the lower 48. And predominantly, it puts a good part, if not almost all, of the lower 48 below average. If you look at the chart at the bottom of the screen here, those areas that are highlighted in blue indicate about 5 to 7 degrees overall below average. Those areas in green indicate overall those 10 days about 10 degrees below average and then you get closer in the purple about 15 to 20 degrees below average so we're definitely going to be entering a colder period for a good part of the lower 48 but we're also going to be looking at the jet stream so here's there's going to be three several jet streams that are going to be coming through we've got one this is the predominant storm track going to be originating across uh, idaho that's going to drop all the way down into portions of texas there's another piece of energy, another low pressure that's going to be originating down here in South Texas. That's going to come up through Florida, but also going to be racing up the eastern seaboard as well. At the same time, we've got these little clipper systems are going to be diving down from eastern Canada. That is going to pull some snow and colder air into the upper Great Lakes as well as into New England through that time frame. So if we're looking at the overall setup and what that actually looks like as far as snowfall, here's the other snowfall that's gonna originate starting in Idaho, down through portions of Wyoming, through the Rockies, down into Arizona. So Flagstaff is gonna get some snow, down into portions of New Mexico, Santa Fe, Albuquerque, those areas into Angel Fire. are gonna be get, getting some heavier snow through the Rockies, through portions of Denver, through uh, Colorado Springs. And then now areas that haven't seen any snow will be seeing some in places like Nebraska, through uh, Kansas here, and then as far south as Western Oklahoma, and even the Texas Panhandle could get it a couple of inches of snow during that time frame. And then we'll be watching to the north where we've got those clipper systems going to be coming down through the, through the Great Lakes and portions of New England. And then really those areas across Vermont and New Hampshire, especially into Maine here. And you look at the pink shaded area, that is likely one to two feet of snow during that time frame. So beyond that, what we're looking at is two prominent features on the storm tracks. So we've still, I think, have the ridge of high pressure that's gonna be locked over Alaska still through that first week of December, as well as into Greenland. Now here's your polar jet. I do feel this is gonna be backing up and it's not gonna be as active as far as the polar jet goes, but the subtropical jet, the southern branch of the jet stream, is still going to continue to remain active. And with that trapping feature over the top, you're still going to allow the colder air to funnel underneath. And here is the storm track that I think is going to be the most pronounced through the winter months. I think we're going to have one far to the south here, originating towards Baja California, through South Texas, through Florida, and going up the East Coast. You're gonna be going to see more low pressures travel through this same area than any low pressure going through winter. <laughs> and what that allows is gonna do, and especially the further we do get in winter, as long as this, this subtropical jet stream continues to remain active and colder air continues to funnel in, you just have a higher probability these upcoming this upcoming winter in the areas further south to get some above average snowfalls than you would typically get just in an average winter because overall you've got a lot of things kind of lining up with the more active subtropical jet and colder air funneling down it just increases your probabilities down there to get more you know more, more times that you could see some snowfall in your future and i think that's exactly what's going to happen uh this winter coming up so 
this is the temperature. So you see the jet stream. This is your first week of that December. We're still going to have the prominent ridge in Alaska and over Greenland, uh, but it's not going to be as pronounced as you're going to be seeing the first 10 days after Thanksgiving. It's going to start to back off a little bit, but we're still going to be seeing below average conditions still funneling into the southeast as well as up into the east coast but i do feel we're going to be getting into more of a warm-up especially for that central and eastern two-thirds of the u.s into that second and third week of december as as that ridge over alaska and greenland starts to relax a little bit and that will allow some of those warmer anomalies to filter back into the lower 48, especially those areas across central and the eastern two thirds of the US, while the west up here towards Alaska, up here towards British Columbia, up here towards the Pacific Northwest, across the west and into the desert southwest, you're gonna start to get on back on the colder side as as uh, the ridge of high pressure will be more pronounced across the central and eastern two thirds. And what that would allow to do, that would pick up the heavier snows again back towards the Intermountain West region. So during that time frame of that second and third week of December, I feel this is gonna be more of an active storm track that's gonna be funneling heavier snows across this region again. We're still gonna be seeing these uh, clipper systems going through the northern tiers of the upper Great Lakes and into New England, that's going to continue during that time frame. But what's also interesting, once we go beyond that, this is the time frame after the 20th. This is about December the 20th. And every day that I look at this, it's even getting more pronounced, meaning it's showing up even better. So for those areas, going back into the ridge across Alaska, the ridge starts to come back across these regions. Again, that traps the cold underneath. And if we're looking at the upper uh, the millibar pattern, wow, we've got a pretty ideal setup for more colder air to funnel down into the lower 48 across, these, across this corridor. And then the more active jet stream gets more pronounced, especially across the central and eastern two thirds of the US. This would be that time frame after that December 20th. Yes, this does include Christmas, and that would include all the way through your New Year's Eve time frame. And if we take a look beyond that, that would include those first couple of days of January. Wow, it even gets more pronounced. So we're looking at a fairly active time frame. I do feel from that December 20th through those first couple of days of January. And if you add all this up, this is from after Thanksgiving through that January 5th timeframe. This is kind of your preliminary snow totals through that time frame. And look at the graph on the bottom you know, of the screen here. These areas in pink would pick up, you know, likely one to two feet, if not a little bit more snow during that time frame. Now, it's not going to be heavy snow, even though you've seen, you know, up here in the portions of the, you know, Montana through the Dakotas, these regions. Remember, we're going to likely have a little bit less active polar jet. So, yeah, it's kind of favoring actually well below average snows across this region. These areas in purple. That indicates about six to eight inches of snow. But look at the snow line dropping further south. So that puts further into Texas, further into West Texas. These areas would likely get snow by then into Missouri, through portions of Southern Illinois, as well as uh, Indiana, back in through Kentucky now, getting through portions of you know Virginia, back into West Virginia. And then of course, once you pull further north, yeah, the combination of these, these low pressure centers that come up the East Coast and these clipper systems come through, especially across the Great Lakes and upper into New England region, these areas could get crushed with three, four feet of snow <laughs> during, during that time frame. So it looks fairly active on the snow front during that after Thanksgiving through that January 5th time frame. So and it looks cold so here's the arctic oscillation right so if you're looking at this and looking at some of the teleconnections here's here's a map and i know these are probably hard to read but it, i'll just circle this is around this that december the 20th time frame 
that goes decisively negative, folks, right? And it, look how far negative it actually goes. This is through that January the 5th time frame. So this is that two-week corridor. We've got the Arctic Oscillation teleconnection say, wow, we've got a pretty significant dip. And I think that pulls, you, you've seen the colder anomalies pulling further south as the as the ridge gets prop, you know, prompt up further north. That's going to allow that colder air to funnel underneath. So that looks to appear to be a colder time frame, especially for that, uh, you know, again, that that central and eastern two thirds of, of the U.S. And once we get beyond that, we're going to get into a little bit more complicated, but I'll probably try to explain this in layman's terms. What we're looking at is way up in the stratosphere now now right now we're looking at this is about 20 20 miles up in the atmosphere this is about the 10 millibar level this is what's often referred to as a sudden stratospheric warming event and this is getting a little bit more pronounced in the longer range models as well as we look at this on a daily basis what we're looking at is the december the, the second week of december time frame it shows a drastic warming up here into the stratosphere. Now, what I mean by that is it's typically around 70 to 80 below zero. Whenever you see something like this, you get a sudden spike in temperatures. Basically, the temperature goes from minus 70 to zero degrees. That's a huge spike. Now, of course, that's 20 miles out in the atmosphere. Now, that takes a long time just because... This is showing up on the map in that second week of December doesn't mean it's automatically going to get cold in the lower 48 into that second week of December. In fact, I showed you it's actually fairly mild during that time frame. But this is going to be trickling down from the stratosphere and it takes a while. Sometimes it could take three or five weeks to come to fruition. But if it does come to fruition, that would put the placement of this colder air mass into the lower 48 or right around that, you know, middle middle of you know January time frame, around about. Now, if we're talking cold fronts, there's just cold fronts, <laughs> there's there's Canadian fronts, there's polar fronts, there's Arctic fronts, and then there's Siberian fronts. So if you list them from the mildest to coldest, you would have the cold that you would have the the canadian the polar and then the arctic and then you would have the siberian and now if this came to fruition this would be kind of a siberian type cold front which would be the coldest obviously the coldest of the season so if this does come to fruition yeah that that middle of january time frame could be pretty cold <laughs> into the lower 48 and it would also align with some of these precipitation anomalies and what we're looking at here is the precipitation map for the month of january so we're going to start to see i you know the el nino like more pronounced remember you know el nino is a lot more pronounced in the winter months than they are any other season out there we're going to have the polar jet this is your polar jet this is the furthest further north jet stream it's a lot less active, right? So do you typically see below average precipitation across the Pacific Northwest, across our northern tiers? And this is why these areas are actually favored to have a below average as far as snowfall goes this winter. But what we're looking at here is the subtropical jet stream, right? This is the further south, south southern tip of the jet stream. This gets more pronounced. Remember the most pronounced jet stream the most pronounced storm track is likely going to be from texas through the southeast through florida and up the east coast this is where you're going to be predominantly seeing the most favored storm track and this continues to be on the wetter side for the month of january and look what happens in february wow i mean it gets even more pronounced as ridging again produces over the top in Alaska and Greenland puts the higher temperature anomalies across North Canada and puts the colder anomalies into the lower 48. So this could be a very active month on the snow throw, th you know, the snow threat, especially for these areas across the deep south. We're talking places like into Texas by then, into Oklahoma, into Arkansas, into Louisiana into Mississippi, into Alabama, into Georgia, even some areas in Florida would likely probably get some snow this season. 
and up the east coast through the Carolinas. This is going to be your most pronounced areas and most favored time frame for these areas across the deep south to get some snowfall this winter. So if we sum it all up and if we look at all the winters that include El Nino's, this is all the El Nino years from 1959 through now. And you can see, right, you got predominantly these areas in brown. That is below average snowfall, less active polar jet, less active snowfall across these areas, across the Pacific Northwest, across our Northern tier states, through portions of the Great Lakes, through portions of the Ohio Valley, and maybe likely in portions up here across, maybe even portions of New England, while much of areas across the South, these areas in blue all favor above average snowfall because you have a more active subtropical jet. Now this is all El Nino's, right? So all El Nino's are a little bit different. There's weak, there's moderate, there's strong. This is likely, as this is now a moderate to strong El Nino. If we look at all the El Nino's of what happened, I still feel that 2009, 2010 type winter is going to come to fruition. My two top analogs are nine and 10, 2002 and 2003. So if we look at the snowfall, what happened back in 2009, I think this is where this winter would likely, likely end up somewhere in this vicinity as far as the snowfall you know, goes and the placement of these snows that goes. So if you look at the graph on the right-hand corner of the screen, these areas in yellow would likely see a foot to possibly two feet of snow this, this winter. These areas in red would likely see two to three to possibly up to four feet of snow this winter. So we've got some pretty healthy snowfalls across New England and across portions of the Northeast, looking at you know four to five feet in some spots but even further south, look at the placement of the snow. These are areas that just don't see the snow and this would likely be as you get after the January 5th, 15th timeframe across these areas across the south, two, four, six, maybe even eight inches of snowfall across portions of Texas here through a good part of the southeast, including the Carolinas, right? And I think the snow actually goes down all the way down to the I-10 corridor this year. So yes, Florida Panhandle's in play, Houston's in play. These areas across Austin, maybe San Antonio would likely probably get some snowfall this year, right? This goes pretty far south. And then of course, across these areas, across the Intermountain West, Flagstaff, Santa Fe, across the Intermountain West of the Rockies. But yes, pretty good, pretty good snowfalls for this upcoming winter. And of course, I'll be fine tuning this as we move forward all throughout the winter months. So guys, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me next update. Wire protect you before and after the storm.